Hey Floss Tube, welcome back to my channel. This is Bernadette from Burn Stitches. Happy New Year's Eve, everyone. This is going to be my final video for 2022 before we ring in the new year. Um, this is a really, really fun video for me that I love to do, or I really enjoyed it last year. So I'm hoping to kind of make it into a tradition. Um, but basically this is going to be my 2022 year in review and I will also share with you plans for the next year for 2023. So this is going to be a very long video so please go ahead and get some drinks or anything like that um, and let's get to it. So to start off, um, looking back in the last year, I think it's incredibly crazy i don't know if i guess that's the only word that i can think of but i think it's incredibly crazy how much change i've had as a stitcher so what i mean by that is when i look back at my 2021 year in review video it was basically my very first year of trying out linen and so I started off, um, it's not even, they're not even hand dyed fabrics. They were just linen. I had a navy linen from um, Zweigart that I purchased so that I could stitch a autumn lane stitchery um, pattern. And then after that, I went ahead and um, got addicted to Mirabilia. So um, I bought my very first um, pattern, Athena goddess of wisdom and you know what's crazy that was my very like i said that was my very first mirabilia pattern and you have seen or i'm you know if you haven't but i have my mira stash video and as you can see i pretty much purchased i want to say 80 percent of the mirabilias so it's incredibly crazy how much i've accumulated in such a short amount of time I have no regrets because I love Mirabilia's, but it is just, you know, it's eye-opening to see how much I've accumulated in the last year. Um, yeah, and now I absolutely love linen. I always try to pick linen for my projects as much as possible. I also used to um, mostly stitch on kits. And as you're gonna see in the next, um, it's probably going to be an hour in the next hour most of my projects are actually kitted up from scratch um not to say that i don't enjoy kits anymore i do i actually love all of my stash that i have and so um it's just crazy how much you know how much change there is um so yeah let's get started with my finishes I don't have a lot of finishes this year. I think last year I mentioned that most likely I am going to at most probably have four finishes for the year for 2022. I did end up meeting that goal. I actually ended up finishing five projects this year, um, but a lot of these are quite small. Um, 2022 has just been really busy. Um, a lot of things happened personally i left my job that i've had for 10 years to go to a different company so that was a big change um i got married um and went to a lot of different places this year so not too much stitching time um so the very first finish that i had for the year i'm gonna go in order of when i finished this but the very first one that I finished for the year, and this is my biggest one, biggest, fanciest, um, et cetera. This is my ultimate project that I'm always gonna be super proud of, but this is Athena from Mirabilia. Um, this is the very first project that I finished for Mirabilia. First project I've ever kitted up from Mirabilia. A lot of firsts for this one. Um, this project is gorgeous i think um for this one um because this was my very first project i kitted this um, entirely from one two three stitch i um 
I picked the called for fabric, which is desert sand linen. I'm pretty sure it's desert sand linen, but it is amazing. Um, I just can't get over it. There were over 1500 beads in here. Um, so it does have a little bit of weight, um, but not too much. So yeah, first finished project. I think I finished this in January last year. So it's been almost a year since I finished this. Um, again, very first one that kicked off my addiction. Um, after that, I was like, I totally understand the hype and I'm gonna collect some more. So you'll see in a bit how much that's changed me. But yeah, this is Athena. Um, I'm trying to remember, I think it took me took me I started this October I think of 2021 um and then I didn't work on this monogamously so I did have different projects here and there so I think I ended up stitching this between I want to say at most 90 days 90 stitching days maybe 60 I have to go back to my old post just to check but this was really fun um and again the most gorgeous project ever um okay the next one that i finished for the year is frosted pumpkin um christmas wreath so this is what this looks like this was super fun um i really liked it um this is not the called for fabric. I picked this fabric because I love polka dots. Um, and I got so excited when I saw that there's actually um, fabric that are polka dots in linen called Petit, Petit Point. So this is a Petit Point 32 count. Um, I think this is the gray and white. Um, but yeah, this is the Frosted Pumpkin uh, not Halloween, Christmas wreath, um, Christmas wreath. This was originally a stitch along, but I purchased this after the stitch along was over, so I didn't stitch along. Um, but I finished this, I want to say May. Um, this was super fun. Um, the only thing I changed in the pattern is the skin color of the Mrs. Santa Claus. Um, I changed it to be a bit darker to match my skin tone. So, this, this was super fun. This was also like super easy to stitch. Um, so it didn't take me that long. Super cute. Um, okay. The third finish for the year um, is from Dimensions. This is my Dimensions gold petite called napping kitten super cute i did this as a stitch along with floss from a couple of dabblers um she ended up finishing hers first um but it is so cute i'm gonna be honest this was very hard for me to finish um because there's a lot of browns in this pattern it actually ended up taking way too long for me to finish um this should have been finished a long time ago but i just couldn't um i just didn't feel like finishing it so i powered through what i basically did was every sunday i set some time to stitch on this just so i can make some progress um so yeah really pretty um you know i don't have cats i don't really like cats either I have like um, bad memories when I was a kid. They used to scratch me, so I'm more of a dog person, but I have a lot of cat patterns and I really think this is so cute. Let me begin. This is a petite collection, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. Dimensions Gold Collections Petite. Um, they're typically about five by seven. You can get this kit on Amazon for, um, I've seen them between 10 to $12. So it's really, really affordable if you'd like to stitch this pattern um like i said this took a lot longer 
to finish than I anticipated. There's a lot of half stitches in here. So like most of these are half stitches, um, which, you know, you're like half stitches actually seems faster. But with dimension kits, the half stitches are usually multiple strands. So some of these half stitches are about um, sometimes four to five strands. So they're quite thick. Also, like I mentioned before, I've never washed this and look how stiff the fabric is. Like, that's how stiff Dimensions fabrics come. It's so stiff. Um, so something to think about because this fabric actually bent some of my needles. Um, so make sure you have extra and handy. Okay, the last two, um, I never planned for these ones, but I ended up purchasing these from my dealer, my Mirabilia dealer, Mindy. Um, but I ended up finishing these. These are Mirabilia's. These are the limited edition fairies that were kitted up from, I don't think it's Witchelt. It's the other company. Or maybe it is Witchelt. No, I don't think so. It's a different one, but um, anyway, this is the very first one of that series that I finished. This is Christmas Elf Fairy. Um, super pretty. This took me two weeks, two stitching weeks. I was very proud. It took about 14 days to stitch. Um, all of these, um, so these were kits. They are, um, they came kitted up. All of the called for flosses for this and the next one that I'm gonna show you are basically um, classic color works. So no DMC on this one. I think the other one is, um, it did come with Krynik for this one. Um, so the kit came up with like, um, did I, it doesn't come with the full Krynik, at least for this one, it's just like, I think it's like a piece of cardboard and then there's like some Krynik wrap around it. So super cute. There are some beads in here. So the wings have beads things like that um but yeah this was super easy i actually stitched this in july um when i got married so this is my my wedding finish which is funny because it's christmas but yeah it was really um really really fun to stitch this because it stitched up very fast um the only thing i didn't care for is the bottom um because this is made out of whisper and i hate whisper um it's super fuzzy which is like super cute but they're a pain they're they're very painful to work with um so yeah one thing though to note um for this one for this kit when i opened mine it's completely brand new um i was missing one of the flosses so i think um you can't, you probably can't tell, but there's some different shades of like taupey brown in here. Those ones, I just ended up subbing with a week's dye works because I didn't want to go ahead and go to my LNS to purchase the missing thread. So I think it's fine though. Um, but yeah, Christmas Elf Fairy. I have the entire collection. So this is the first one. And then the last finish of the year that I did, which is also part of that collection, is Halloween Fairy. So super cute. I was really excited when I saw this kit. Um, I actually thought that these kits were out of print. And then um, Mindy from Facebook was selling the kits. Um, so I went ahead and got all of them. And then she ended up um, letting everyone know that they you can now also just purchase this as a chart and the charts are only ten dollars um to buy the kit i think it costed about 50 for each one so not bad um so yeah this is halloween fairy i finished this in november so about last month um for this one, I had all of the flosses all were all there. The only thing is I ran out of the um, color for this one. 
the green on the wing so I did end up having to go to my LNS to pick it up um I think I had like this small amount left but I didn't have enough so I just went ahead and purchased it it might just be like a stitching you know just the way that you stitch um so I think maybe you won't run out depending on how you stitch for the wings I ended up stitching this across and then coming back so not one stitch at a time which is what you usually do with variegated um, because I already had a f like I already thought that I that one skein wasn't enough like um you know one pack of floss wasn't enough so I just went ahead and got some more so yeah this one I don't think this one had any Krynex. This is just um, classic color works and some beads. The beads on this is not as much as the other one. But this one had a lot more fractional stitches than the Christmas Elf Fairy. But yeah, it is super cute. I can't wait to stitch the rest. Um, I have the other one. So the other ones, in case you're curious, there is a thanksgiving fairy a valentine's day fairy and then a new year's eve fairy so there's that and then i think there's two that were released as pdfs just under Hirschner. So there's a sunflower fairy which i do have and then the other one is another halloween fairy but it says trick or treat on it um i have the pattern i bought it from Hirschner's, but i don't have that kitted up um, but I don't think I'm going to be working on them next year. We'll see though. Um, again, for this one, it took me um, two stitching weeks to finish. So again, not too bad. This is quite small. But it's really pretty. Can't get over it. It's so pretty. Um, so yeah. If you're interested, you can get the charts from 123 Stitch or your um, wherever you buy your Mirabilia patterns. Um, you can go get them. I would, um, I've seen like some resellers sell the fully kitted ones for like 70 or $80. Don't think that's worth it because you can get the pattern for $10 and then kit it up yourself. One thing I forgot to mention, so for these two, these two have overlapping um, flosses. So for any flosses that um, I used for this, that I still have some left over from this one, I used the flosses from this one first. So I ended up actually, um, some of them, I didn't even end up touching flosses from the Halloween fairy. I ended up just using up the ones from here first. So yeah, just an FYI. If you want to kit it up, you don't have to like buy everything like twice or even three times because I've seen on the other kits um, also some duplicates. So I kept all of the leftover flosses for this. <clears throat> so yeah, those are my finishes. Um, before I move on to my whips, one thing I wanted to share as like my best purchase for the year in 2022 um hopefully don't mess it up but this is my best purchase for 2022 this is my Belki Potoki mini stand um I traveled a lot this year so this was such a good thing to bring it's very lightweight I brought this on a plane um I've stitched on this on the couch too it's not like it's pretty good. I also stitch on this here on my desk. This is my work desk. Um, so yeah, I was able to really make use of this. Um, Belki Potoki website. This is the mini stand. I got mine in green. It did took a very long time to um, to finish, but they don't charge you until it's ready to be shipped. So you can put your name down and it might take like, mine took almost a year to do but 
might be mindful that this came all the way from Ukraine and I actually wasn't even sure that they were still making products because of the war. So I was very surprised when they finally reached out and told me that my stand was ready to be shipped. So kudos to them. I hope that they're doing okay. Um, one thing to note for this one, um, I'm sure it's fine, but I are on the side of caution, but I like to wrap mine with felt if I have a like a lamp that I clip on in here. Um, I just put a felt on it just so it won't scratch it just in case, you never know. Um, this is made out of wood, so I just wanna protect it as much as I can. It's not a cheap like product. This is like $200 with ship, like plus shipping. And so, or I think it's with shipping, I can't remember, but regardless, it's not a cheap thing to do, so yeah really expensive uh, but really really worth it in my opinion one thing that isn't worth it to me that i semi have regrets in purchasing is my lowery stand um to preface i bought my lowery stand from lovecrafts it was i got it on sale so i actually ended up getting my lowery stand for about $105 so that was a really good deal to me because lowery stands cost about $160-$175 I think I'm not 100% sure but it's a lot a lot more than $105 so I got it on sale so I got it but honestly in comparison to my old stand which was the daylight smart switch the daylight smart stand I actually prefer the daylight one Unfortunately, I gave it to my mom and I don't want to be mean and ask for it back. I think it's fine. Um, but yeah, I'm making do with my lowery. I'm still trying to figure out the optimal setup, but I don't like that it's a little bit wobbly. And I did have to buy, well, it gets wobbly if you don't anchor it. So I currently have it underneath the leg of my couch, so it's not wobbly anymore, but I still prefer the daylight smart stand. Um, I did have to buy the lamp, the, um, I think it's like the lamp extension or whatever you call it. I ended up purchasing a very big lamp called from Brightview. It's on Amazon. I got it for, I think $30. So it was pretty good. Um, and it's huge and it goes on the little light. Oh yeah. It's called a light bracket. It goes in the middle. You just pop it. Um, and it's really good. Um, what I don't like about the lowery is my it doesn't do well handling the the large scroll scroll frame. So the eleven by the eleven by seventeen, it doesn't handle it very well. So I actually had ended up purchasing the corner clamps. It hasn't come in yet. It hasn't even shipped. So for now, I. If I do use the lowery, I try not to use the really large Q snaps that I have because it just doesn't hold as much. It's kind of like lopsided like this when I stitch it. Yeah, it doesn't look, I don't know, I don't like it. Anyway, enough of that. Let's go on to whips. So for 2023, um, all of these are coming with me to 2023. I'm not UFOing anything. Um, some of these, a lot of these have been, like I think all of them have been featured, but um, just wanna show you my whips. Um, and please be patient, I have a large pile. Pile, yeah. So for my whips, I believe I am taking 14 with me for the next year which is quite a lot, but um, I'll let you, you know, I'll tell you about my 23 plants afterwards. So first of all, this is my biggest whip. This is my Pokemon extended gen one. This is how much I've done so far. I don't know if I ended up stitching on this in 2022 but really funny so i started this 
Um, and then I got so bored that I did, cause you have, I picked the extended one. So it has a lot more background and this was such a pain to stitch. And I was like, I don't want to do it. I want to get a different fabric for it and not stitch the background. I did that. I bought like a full yard of like lavender Ada, started it. Like I started to grid it cause I want to start in the corner. And then I think I only put like less than 100 stitches and then I never touched it again. So I, as I was putting through this whip parade stash, I was like, you know what? I think I will just go back to my old one, suck it up and I can leave all the background until later. If that means I'll make more progress um, and we'll see where it goes. So, so far, this is my progress. This is a gigantic project um, to put into perspective. This is how big the fabric is. And this is how much I've done. So this is probably really legit gonna take me a full decade to finish. But yeah, we'll see. I'm gonna attempt to make some, to put some stitches in here. At least have like one Pokemon done per month maybe. So hopefully by, next year you'll see a little bit of progress here but we shall see epic pokemon i didn't give up on you i did almost thought it would be a ufo but we just got the latest game from switch my sister gave it to my husband um the pokemon we have the pokemon scarlet so he's been enjoying it and then when i was in japan I do this whenever I'm traveling for some reason, but I turn on my Pokemon Go. And so I have been playing it since then. And so this is giving me like the, this is giving me like a reason to continue stitching this. So whip number one that I'll be taking with me for 2023. Um, <clears throat> the next one, this is in no order, but forgive me, it's gonna be really messy here. Um, for the next one, so so for the next whip, um, this is a fairly new whip. I don't think I've featured this in any video yet. Um, but I started in December. Carols on the Square by Praiseworthy Stitches. So, really pretty. And this is my progress. So, um, this is the middle house. So, I'm working on this right now. This is super fun. Um, Praiseworthy Stitches uses um, Weeks Dye Works and Gentle Arts Thread. So that's the, I'm using basically all the called for fabric um, and flosses. So really cute. I get these kitted up from one, two, three stitch. So pretty easy. Um, oh, actually for this one, I did half and half. I, I already had the fabric because I was gonna use this for Santa's magic, but then I realized that half of Santa's mat like some of the parts for Santa's magic you can see the background so I opted I ended up getting a different fabric for that so I had this in my stash which was perfect because this was the call for fabric for Carol's on the square and then a majority or like I want to say like at least 60 percent of the flosses for Carol's on the square share the same color as another one of their um winter scenes i can't remember the name now but i had that one kitted up but i actually looked at the pattern and i realized i want to do this first so i ended up getting picking out the um the picking out the flosses from the other one and putting it in here and then i filled in the rest with my um with through my lns so yeah super pretty this is gonna get filled in some more um carols on the square this is the middle house so in this pattern it's that 
middle red house that I'm working on because I started in the middle. Cool. Oh, this one has specialty stitches. So it has, um, has a bunch of specialty stitches. Um, Smyrna, I've done those before. You have three, you have two different ones. I guess there's a Smyrna over six, a regular Smyrna, and then like, it's called satin stitches. I don't think I've ever done that, so I have to Google how to do that. And then there's also Crynix and stuff. I don't think I have all the Crynix. Wait, does it have Crynix? Yeah, there's Crynix in here and beads. I don't have the Crynix or beads, but I figured that's not gonna be for a while, so I'll kit it up when I'm ready. Carol's on the spray. Switch number two. Bear with me. Okay, so with number three, let's see if I can find, okay. Whip number three, this one is special. This is Garden Party by Mirabilia. I had this kitted for a while. So I am stitching this with Sarah from Memphis Sarah E. Here's my progress so far. Um, so I am stitching this to her. We actually have a hashtag called hashtag Garden Party with Friends. So if you're stitching this, feel free to join us. Um, I ended up um, gifting her the very same um, kit, except she has a different fabric for her birthday. So it would be—I thought it would be so fun to stitch this together. So I'm really excited. Um, we're gonna stitch this, and then we're both going to the Queen City Stitchers Retreat in October, um, which is the Mirabilia Retreat. So we're gonna bring this and stitch it together in person. So really excited um so far i love the variegation so the borders for all of these that's like a karen water lily and so the variegation is amazing like this is not multiple like the border is not a multiple um they're not like confetti stitches this is like one color from um karen water lily so it is gorgeous so pretty i did have to start on the corner so i had to grid this um i don't know if you can see but these are actually using um like the easy guide red thread that i ended up purchasing from amazon i'm usually a middle starter but the middle starter on garden party are empty spaces and so I was like, okay, I'm gonna just go ahead and grid so that I know where to start exactly. So, yay, really excited, so pretty. Um, this is using all of the call for flosses. I'm pretty sure this is also the called for fabric, which is twilight blue linen from Witchold. so yeah. Garden party. This is with number three. We will be very proud. I'm using my Paco organizer because whenever I put away my flosses, I usually just toss them in the bag and then I have to play this game of what symbol does it go with. So, really excited. Um, see if I can. This is that, um, the thread of Karen Water Lily that changes color. So pretty. Okay. That's whip number three. All right. Whip number four. This is, um, this is Christmas Elegance. Uh, let's see. This is Christmas Elegance. 
This is an auto print chart from Mirabilia. I've had this kitted up for a while. Um, and this is my progress so far. Those are her hands. Um, so I started this in December. This is a start. This is also a stitch along. I'm using two different hashtags. Um, the first one is hashtag so fancy B day style. That is for Sarah, Memphis Sarah E's birthday. That was, this is my fancy lady start to celebrate her birthday. And then hashtag Christmas elegance style put together by Maggie from Kitchy Whips. So I'm using this. Um, yeah, super pretty. So I had this, um, I had this kitted up a long time ago, but I ended up getting this fabric. Um, this fabric is whimsical from Bestitch Me. This is a fabric of the mud color. As soon as I got it, I was like, I actually want to switch out my fabric. Um, when I kitted this, I, um, I was in Adventures and I kitted it up using the called for fabric, which is antique blue. But then I was like, this is so much better. So yeah, I picked this one instead. So yeah, you're gonna see a lot more of this. Pretty. As you can see, my addiction to Mirabilia is pretty much coming through on my whip pile by having a lot of them. I do have a lot of plans to finish these, so they're not gonna go in blue. Um, I have this entirely kitted up. Okay, next whip. This one is Tree Bears. Sorry. Tree Bears by Soda Stitch. Um, I bought the PDF pattern on Etsy from Soda Stitch websites. Soda Stitch Etsy website. This is what the pattern looks like. Tree Bear. I ended up um, picking a red fabric. Um, the fabric is called Watermelon Slushy from Be Stitch Me. Um, I got this when she had like a ready, ready to ship fabric like update on her shop. I bought a bunch, so I was like, ooh, red. Wonder what I'll use it for. Well, perfect. Tree Bears by Soda Stitch. I have a hashtag for this if you're interested. Hashtag Soda Stitch Saturday where every Saturday I spend some time and stitch some soda stitch. Yee! Tree bear, you're so cute. All right, so a lot of these are Christmas and a lot of them are in hoops because I am going to be working on them all day today. We have no Christmas plans. It is raining like crazy here in the Bay, which well, I'm not complaining because we need the rain. California is always under drought, um, but the bay itself is supposed to get about 10 inches of rain today. So gonna be crazy, um, but I'm gonna be stitching on all of my holiday stuff, most of my holiday stuff today, so I can make some progress before the new year. Okay, there's that. Um, all right, my next set of whips. This is my oldest whip. I did not make too much progress on it this year. This is Dimensions Gold Collection Paris Market. I have started this, I think, in 2021. So, like early 2021. And this is my progress. Oh, sorry. This is my progress on it so not too much i think i'm about 24 percent 24 like 20 ish percent um yeah so i think i think it's because all of the greens were making me tired so but it's so lifelike especially on camera so pretty so i'm gonna do the same thing that i do that I did for napping kitten. I think to make progress on this for 2023, I'm gonna have to dedicate like a day just to stitch on this once a week so that I can see progress. My goal for next year for this one 
is I want to finish the bottom half maybe. I want to get to at least 50% by next year. I don't have to finish it in the next year. I think that's fine, but at least get to 50. Like, it's just taking too long. So, yeah, Paris Market. It's so pretty though. It has a lot of like confetti, which I think is also like one of the reasons why I'm not trying to finish this too fast. I'm not a big fan of confetti. I don't do parking. Ow. I just smack. I just stabbed myself with a needle. So yeah. Paris Market. stitches another one this is my very first one that i've stitched from them this is widow black's bnb so pretty i think i can finish it in 2023 oh, i just have to plan it but again this is using the called for fabric and flosses which are weeks dye in gentle arts um this is my progress so far. Oops. So I think I finished one third of the house. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping I can finish this next year. That will be really fun. I'm going to put that as a goal. Need to finish this. I actually love stitching this. This is so fun. Um, this is murky from picture this plus 32 count um for this one i don't know what size i got um because i got this murky fabric from um silver needle they had um if you type in praiseworthy stitches from silver needle they have like a bunch of drop downs where you can just put like like which ones you want to um, get for praiseworthy and i put like I want the linen for this one and then they cut it to fit the design so yeah really pretty um i think the best part on here it's actually a big pain in the butt was basically this this is a dmc i don't know what kind it is but look at that spider web that one was a pain in the butt but it was worth it it's called wait is it a dmc maybe it's not dmc oh no maybe it is it's a silver metallic that's a pain in the butt to use but yeah really excited um i'm hoping to finish this like i said next year so wish me luck if you want to see a finished um, version of this go check out Rika from House of Stitch and Stash she's actually the reason why I ended up stitching this because I saw hers and I was like what kind of design is that please tell me and then she did and then I discovered praiseworthy stitches and then I got most of their patterns it's so cool yeah I want to finish this because I have the next one um, they have they basically come out with a Halloween um, like haunted house every single year and so I have two other ones I have the bump in the night which is another big one like this and then there's a smaller one called blue moon manor I think it's called blue moon manor I have that one too that was smaller so maybe I'll do that next when I'm done with this but yeah, super fun. I enjoy stitching this. Um, and their patterns are quite big. Um, I got these from 123 Stitch. The next one 
is another soda stitch. So this one, I started this on my birthday this year, which was in April. Actually, I technically started this one day late, so I started it in May because my birthday is April 30. So I started this the next day, May 1st. This was my birthday start and it is Sweet Treat by Soda Stitch. It is so cute. Again, I love polka dots. So I picked this pattern. Um, this is the pattern. Oh, it's not Sweet Treat, it's called Sweet Bear. <laughs> so yeah, it looks like I'm about halfway done. So I have these two tiers left. I'm gonna see if I can finish this by my next birthday this year. We'll see. Um, this isn't bad. I usually, I stitch this as part of Soda Stitch Saturday and I usually make really good progress. Um, with Soda Stitch, the back stitches makes a difference. It's what brings the, um, it's what brings these to life. So yeah, let's look at it one more time. I did make a mistake on this and it's driving me crazy every time I see it. Um, so I think I'm gonna try to fix it. I'm gonna, there's supposed to be like a lollipop or like a gumball in here, but um, this cupcake is a lot closer than it should be. And now it doesn't have enough space in here, but I think I'll modify so that there's not like that weird gap. Okay. Gonna aim for a 2023 finish. one i love this one this one i was so excited to start santa's magic by mirabilia my all-time favorite mirabilia pattern this is out of print got this from my friend donna who gifted this to me out of the kindness of her heart it's so cute um and this is my progress for the year. Um, -da! This is it. I'm a middle starter, so of course I started in the middle. So, I love Santa's magic. This is using the called for floss and fabric so this is the this is this this is is this desert sand linen yeah desert sand linen by witchelt so that it just looks exactly like the model picture so I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this. I love the design. Like I said, Santa's Magic is actually my favorite. Um, like when I saw this on, um, her name is Rosia from Cocohama Stitchery. When I saw her stitch this, I really wanted to find a pattern and it was out of print. So I scoured until Donna sent me the pattern, who I was so happy about. But I was so excited to kit this up that I ended up kitting it just by looking at the back, which is, you know, you're like, okay, but like, that's what you're supposed to do. Well, this came out in 1995. So when this came out in 1995, all the Krynix crine that are used were number eight braids. I didn't think anything of it because this was my second Mirabilia start. Yeah, this was my second Mirabilia start. And then I didn't really, I used, I used a Krynik in Athena and it was a number, it was also number eight, but it wasn't too much. So I didn't think anything of it, but I didn't realize how hard number eight braids are to like use. And all of my Krynik's are number eight. So I can only tolerate stitching on the Krynik part a little bit at a time. 
And so this is why it's taking me a lot longer to finish this one because there's quite a lot of Krynex. Like there's eight colors of Krynex in here and some of them have multiple spools. Like the peacock one has like four spools itself. So technically that's 12. Plus there's like other ones that have multiple. And then on top of that, these has whisper threads, which like I said, I hate. And it comes with like, not it comes, you have to get two of the whisper whites for his beard and then there's also brown so it's a lot of material that i don't like to use in this design so i have a love-hate relationship but i'm gonna power through it because i absolutely love santa we'll see if i can finish it in 2023 if not i'll do the best that i can okay <clears throat> start with this this one is probably going to be my first or second finish for 2023 because i'm so close i just don't feel like working on it right now though but this is my under the sea this is my under the sea project from frosted pumpkins to tree this is a stitch along i am I guess technically I'm three clues behind because the first clue I um one of the clues I ended up skipping it because I don't think I wanted to do it but after seeing the finished pattern I feel like I have to put it on um let me show you what it looks like but this is the finished project so the under the sea right here I opted not to do it in the first place but if i don't and i just stitch the anchors it looks kind of weird that this is just all blank so i think i'm gonna just go ahead and do it so yeah um this one i ended up stitching this on a fabric i have in my stash i got i don't know what color this is because it's from a d stash that i got from Instagram but it's super pretty it's an opal so yeah I'm pretty sure I can finish this in less than a week so I'll probably work on this next month just to get it out of the way frosted pumpkin they're super whimsical the only thing with frosted pumpkin um I never care for the fabrics that they ended up choosing i always change it out because i i like brighter ones and i feel like they always um they always pick like a more neutral color and i like mine colorful so um but to each their own so that's that um the next one oh this is tree bear um almost done with my whip braid it's a lot more than last year huh yeah i've become a monster just kidding i don't care stitch what makes you happy have many many whips whatever makes you happy next one is a nora corbett buttercup from pixie blossom i started this in october when i went to vancouver it's so cute um for this one this is the no sorry it's this this way this is the um this is what i have so far i think about about 40 percent i am stitching this not on the called for fabric um but this is just like a witcho fabric this is peaceful purple this is actually the fabric for princess eliana but i I thought it would look really pretty with buttercup i don't really like i think the white was too white for me so i will use this one so um this one stitches up really fast so i think i can also get it done this year i took that with me on my trip to japan so um this one 
fits really well with the Velky Patoki. <clears throat> This one is another December start. Um, this is Dimensions, home for the holidays. Um, this is a regular Dimensions kit. So I'm hoping this stitches up really fast because a lot of these are half stitches. Like basically that in the, the brown door, these are all half stitches. Um, this is my progress so far as you can see i moved to a different nerd hoop because you can see the outline but yeah this is the progress so far the thing with this like i mentioned with dimension the fabric is really thick and so um the the door also uses a lot of strands i think um the half stitches are four strands and so it's it hurts my thumb when I stitch this so I only can do it a little bit of a time but hopefully because it's not too bad or like a lot of half stitches that this goes by fast so I'm gonna aim to finish this by end of this year too oh for this one you can change as you can see it says it says Thompson in here but you can actually change that if you want to put a different name so I'm going to change mine to my name when I'm done pretty okay two more whips okay this one is my second oldest whip so I do also need to make some traction on this but this is Letty Stitch Fairy Tale House. You're so pretty. And this is my progress so far. I love Letty Stitch. I love that it came with a pre gridded fabric. And then, um, yeah, the coverage is really good. You know, this is like. They use anchor so like the blacks have a lot more coverage compared to if you have used 310 so really pretty um i again don't have too much like i don't think i'm gonna aim to get this finished this year but maybe at least get halfway or even 25 percent would be good enough for me for the next year so here's hoping that it will be done then um one thing to point um for this um it tells you for letty stitch it's similar to like luca s who is the parent company they tell you what kind of like you know how um how hard the pattern is so for this one it has the full process uses two strands and then five strand, which is kind of a lot. And then they have um, their back stitches uses one strand and then five strands. So pretty detailed, I'm excited. Yeah, I think I wanna get at least like a quarter done for 2023. Pretty. All right, we are almost there for the whips. My final whip to show you. I'm gonna try to also finish this in the early 2023 is Lakapati by Bella Filipina. Um, I started this for on Father's Day. I'm stitching this for my parents. Lakapati. Representation matters. Um, I am so in love with this project. This is kind of like Athena for me, but this is my progress. It's so pretty. Um, look at that. I think I can get this done by February if I work on it a lot in January. So yeah, um, this is, um, Evergreen by... 
I think Crafty Kitten UK. I got this off of Fabric D Stash. Um, oh, if you have the Bestitch Me Fabric of the Month, the December one looks exactly like this. So if you want to stitch like a potty and you are looking for a fabric, I recommend that one if you don't have access to this one that I have. So yeah, pretty. Isn't it gorgeous? I love Bella Filipina. I have a bunch of patterns on the way. Um, I got it from Under the Sea Fabrics from their Black Friday sale when they had 15% off. Um, but Leslie said she's waiting on one of my patterns because it's on back order. And then she'll send it right over. But I have a bunch of Bella Filipinas coming. So really excited. I love the designs. And, you know, Bella Filipinas have a special place for me because it is um, the designer's Filipino. Um... And I thought that was really cool. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to um, stitch some more. I already have, um, I already know which Bella Filipina I want to do next, which is going to be Maria McKilling. Um, and I already have the perfect fabric for it. But we'll see when it's this is done. Um, so yeah, once more, Lakapati. I'm really obsessed with the basket of like wheat. This is supposed to be rice actually, but yeah. Okay. So, my God, are you as winded as I am? That is my whip <clears throat> parade for 2022. So I hope you really enjoyed that. Um, all right, so let's talk about plans for 2023. I'm gonna try not to have too many because well you're gonna laugh because you're like you don't want too many but you have so much in your ready to go pile um so 2023 i am participating in whip warriors next year and i am going to be doing 23 and 23 so it's a facebook group that was just gonna keep you accountable and finishing up your whips um, I chose 23 and 23 because I want to have a maximum of 23 projects and so after 23 you cap out you can't start anymore until you know you just have 23. I mean technically you're supposed to be working on your whips but yeah so so far that's 14 projects if I'm if I counted that correctly so I should have about seven eight nine projects um that i can essentially start for 2023 to just be you know 23 and under um, i'm not going to but i do have a bunch of projects on standby when i do want to do any new start so i'm gonna share that with you but before that this is non-stitchy related in a way but i do have another um plan for 2023 and the future but I want to finish one diamond painting a year because I bought so much and they're just sitting upstairs and not getting any love so for 2023 my plan is to finish this diamond painting that I got from the diamond art club this is a rainbow finger called actually I don't remember the name of this does it say anywhere this is like the couch one. Um, I don't think it's actually anywhere, but hopefully you can see this is huge dragon on the couch by Randall Spangler. A lot of you um, stitch Randall Spangler on a hay, but I have no patience for hay. So I'm gonna do diamond. I have a lot of Randall Spangler diamond painting, so. I'm gonna finish this in 2023. I'm about like more than halfway there, so yeah. I hope to be done soon. I know some of you have asked about my diamond painting, so hopefully this helps um, scratch that itch. Um, I do love Diamond Art Club. Their their beads are amazing, so. Um, 
is my plan for 2023 for a diamond painting. I'm going to finish this. All right. So 2023 potential new starts. Um, I have a lot. First of all, though, um, I want to start this. I was supposed to start this on new, on Christmas Eve uh, because I wanted to start this on my grandma's birthday because she's the reason why I bought this pattern. It reminded me of her because she used to have a sewing. She she passed away um, over 10 years ago, but um, I will always remember my childhood. She has a she had this sewing machine, so I wanted to purchase this um, and stitch it in her memory. This is Players and Kittens by Marechka. Um, I have completed the two other ones in this series. I had the um, Kittens and Cherries, and then I can't remember the name of the other one, but I finished it in 2021. You can look up my 2021 year in review if you'd like to see, but this is the next um, next one for that collection in my opinion. Um, but yeah, so I want to start this pattern next year, potentially soon. I just want to make more progress in my other uh, projects before I start this. But this one is going to be on a 16 count Ada. So that one for sure. And then um, another project that I want to start is, this is my latest video that I just released. This is from Luca S called Paris and Flowers. I also want to start this one soon. And again, I just want to make some progress with my new one. Um, oh, for Whip Warrior, for this to count as a whip, you have to make at least 200 stitches in your first stitching session. So I want to start these when I feel like I can do that and devote at least 200 stitches. So yeah, pears and flowers. Um, go check out my latest video. I did an unboxing. This was a gift from Luca S. So <coughs> I'm really happy to have bought that. Okay. Um, and then my next one is another frosted pumpkin. Um, I'm gonna start my frosted pumpkin for this one when I finish the under the sea. Um, so this one is actually another wreath. This is a stitch along. I just didn't start it on time. I don't have the full picture yet, but this is what it has been released so far. This is Halloween wreath. Um, I have two fabric choices. I'm not 100% sure which one yet, but I will be going with either one of these. So you let me know which one you think would look better. But this is from Barbaral Creations. I believe they're in Hungary. Um, but they're really, really nice fabric. So. The first one is Woodland Halloween, which actually looks like murky from Picture This Plus. And then the other one is Ruins. So I'm debating between either one for the Halloween wreath. So let me know which one you think I should go for. Yeah, really pretty. Again, let me show, uh, sorry for the ring light, but that's what it looks like so far. Okay. There's that. And then the other one I want to finish. I want to start next year. Um, where did it go? Oh, you know what? Take this one. I showed it to you in a previous video. Oh, it's in here. I'm funny. Um, I want to finish this when I'm done with Sweet Bear. At least that's the plan for now. Um, but I want to start Puppy Bakery by 
sew a stitch. So this is the pattern. I got it in PDF, but yeah, it's so cute. Um, I already have it kitted up, so I just want to finish a few projects before I start it. But this is the fabric that I chose. It's very, like, I don't know, it makes me really happy. This is from a fabric de, de stash. It doesn't have the name, but this is an Opa Logana from Fantasy Dye Fabric. So I'm gonna use that for Puppy Bakery. Maybe I'll start this after Under the Sea instead of the Halloween wreath. I think the Halloween wreath, I'm gonna let it finish first. Or not finish, at least get it halfway because I want to see which is the best fabric to use. So yeah, it is planned. And then the rest of these are Mirabilia's. Um, like I said, I have so many Mirabilia's now that I feel like I need to stitch a lot of them because there are so many patterns out there and I keep collecting them. So they're also like really fun to stitch. So I know for sure that I'll finish them and not sit there forever. So a few things I want to start. Um, I have like these ones for sure I want to start. All of these I for sure I want to start. I just, some of them I'm not 100% sure when, but for starters, I want to start Duchess of Rowan this year. I'm going to start this when the next Bridgerton season comes out. I know it's kind of cheesy, but I like it. Um, I am going, I have it kitted up already. I think I need to figure out the, I think I need to um, get the rest of the DMCs, but I started to kit it up. Um, I do have the embellishment pack. I got this from Mindy on Facebook. And this is the fabric that I chose for, um, for Duchess of Rowan. This is a this is a raw opalescent Belfast linen. It's so pretty and simple. So yeah, really excited to start this one. Um, so I don't know when Bridgerton is gonna like come back, but I'm gonna start it when that comes back. Um for my birthday. My birthday start for this year, so this will be my April start. I am going to start Miss Cherry Blossom. Um, I think it's fitting because technically my birth my birthday is in April, so um, I'm gonna start this one. I have that one almost kitted up. I have the beads and the Kleenex. Um, I think I might need to just get the rest of the DMC, but this is the fabric that I'm thinking for Miss Cherry Blossom. This is, I don't, there's no name for this. This is kind of like a peachy colored fabric. This is a fat quarter. This is from Nicholas Flamel Design on Etsy. Um, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but it's spelled I-M-R-E on instagram that's his oh no sorry it's tom ross <laughs> that's his last name i am Ari. but tom ross from nicholas flamel design this is his work it's gorgeous i love his fabrics um he lives in i think he's also from hungary but yeah this is my fully kitted up not fully kitted up but these are my what i've collected so far so i'm gonna start that for my birthday gonna be my birthday start okay and then the rest of my two mirabilias i am going to start this one i showed this to you last year but i didn't actually get to start it this year this is my lady's garden this is I don't know if this is the only Mirabilia, but definitely one of the few Mirabilias that doesn't have any beads. So this is like all DMC, Crynix, and Water Lilies. So 
my ladies garden this is an out of print pattern um, i will be stitching this on the called for fabric which is natural linen so just to keep it simple really excited i had this kitted up by a company that i found on etsy so it comes with everything including the karen water lilies the only thing is like they don't give you the full like skeins of karen water lilies they just give you what's necessary which i guess is fine because then you don't have any extras but i always like a full one because sometimes you just never know anyway we'll see and then the last one i you guys have also seen this last year but i didn't get to start it this is villa mirabilia another out of print and um, pretty expensive villa mirabilia um i will be stitching this on the called for fabric which is willow green i've seen like other people use different fabrics for this and i actually really really wish that i could change it but villa mirabilia is pretty big so you're gonna need a fat half and i already spent money on the fabric it's just kind of like i don't think it's that bad but it's not the most funnest color um but yeah we'll see sorry my husband is texting me yes i'm almost done anyway um yeah i'm definitely gonna be starting it this year it's really pretty i think i just want to finish some of my bigger mirabilias first though before i start it so that is it that is my 2023 plans so far i am going to do my best to record what i stitch i do i bought this planner from japan it's really cute they're like little big goods i did really well in december i managed to fill in my december plans or not december plans what i stitched in december I had two non-stitching days um so yeah that is it um i hope that you all enjoyed this thank you so much for sticking around thank you so much for um supporting this channel for friending me on instagram um sending me messages here i really appreciate it i love connecting with every single one of you so I hope that we get to do it a lot more again in 2023. Um, stay safe, everyone. Um, happy stitching, and um, can't wait to um, can't wait to see what's in store for the next year for everybody. So, thanks, everyone. Bye now.